Hello friends. In the last video, we looked at grid back layout manager and grid back constraints. So in this video also, we will continue to learn more grid back constraints. So the grid back constraints we are going to learn here are grid X, grid Y, grid width and grid height. So we already looked at grid width. Um, we used a grid width equal to one. Then we used a grid width uh, as a remainder, grid back constraint with remainder. So the remainder will add a new row. Now we will see how we can use grid width and grid height in relation to grid X and grid Y. So this is the prerequisite. This video assumes that a frame window was already created. If you want to know how to create frame window, refer this video. So to better understand grid X and grid Y of grid back constraints, have a look at this picture. If you see the grid X and grid Y are like array cells. So the X cells are indexed like 0, 1, 2, 3. Similarly, Y cells are indexed from 0, 1, 2, like that it will go on. So the picture beside helps us to understand how we can set constraints using grid X and grid Y. So in the coming slide, we are going to use this picture as reference and we are going to create all the buttons. So you will also learn how grid width and grid heights are uh, used to create buttons like this. Now we will create these buttons, uh, button one through nine. So as it is shown here, we are going to create these buttons and we are going to place those in a frame window. So the step one is preparing the buttons and assigning the grid back layout to our frame window, then preparing the initial grid back constraints. So for a reference, you can refer the picture in the left side. So what we are doing, since we are creating and arranging nine buttons, so those buttons are created first. So we labeled these buttons as BTN1, BTN2, like wise we are continuing and we ended up creating the last button as BTN9. Then we create a grid back layout and we set the frame windows layout as grid back layout. So in this first step nine buttons are ready and frame window uses grid back layout to arrange these buttons. So we just created the button we haven't yet added these buttons to our frame window. So next we create our uh, grid back constraints. So these three are the common property, weight X one, weight Y one. So here we are not going to resize the button based on weight X and weight Y. So we gave it as one, one for both X and Y. Then we want the fill both. That means all the buttons will occupy the entire area of the frame window. So here is our second step. First we will add button 1 and button 2. So here we are preparing the constraint for button 1. And if you see we specified grid Y as 0. That means in the picture you can see where the button 1 is starting. Button 1 is starting at Y location 0 and x location 0. 
that's why we specified grid x equal to 0 and grid y equal to 0 grid width equal to 2 so what's mean by that so here we are stating that button 1 should span two cells that means it occupies two cell location with twice grid height equal to 1 that means in y cell it will occupy only one location only one cell so by looking at the picture you can easily understand why we are setting grid x equal to 0 grid y equal to 0 grid height equal to 1 why because uh, grid height equal to 1 because it occupies one cell location on the y side but grid width we specified as 2 because we want to occupy two cell on the x side next we set these constraints and after that we add the button 1 next the properties are same for button 2 except grid x because the starting location for this is at grid location 2 i mean x location 2 you can see that here in the picture button 1 occupies x location 0 and 1 button 2 occupies i mean the button 2 starts at grid location 2 that's why we specified grid x equal to 2 but a grid y is still same that's why we have it changed that here so we just specified gcon dot grid x equal to 2 so grid back constraint grid x equal to 2 tells that where the button should start so next we are setting these constraints and we are adding button 2 now it is time to go to eclipse and see how it looks remember we just added two button only and we specified the fill as both so the button 1 and button 2 will occupy the entire area of the frame window we haven't added button 3 to button 9 so you will see only button 1 and button 2 and that occupies the entire height and width of the frame window So our frame window is ready. Now we will add the button 1 and button 2. So these codes are already explained in the PowerPoint. So now let us just import whatever is required. Then grid back layout. So grid back layout is from java.awt package. Let us import that. Once buttons and grid back layout is ready we are creating a grid back constraints so after specifying this common property we started adding the buttons now if i execute it you can see both button 1 and button 2 and that occupies the entire width and height of this uh, frame window all right So we added button 1 and button 2. Now we will go to next row of buttons. So we will add button 3 to 6. So here is the reference picture once again. And if you see this time we changed a grid y equal to 1. Why? Because we are going to add the button 3 at y location 1. That means the second row then grid width we specified one previously grid width for button one and button two were two now we specified grid width as one so grid x equal to zero so this is the constraint for button three so we specified start the button three at grid x location zero and grid y location one then grid width as one so when button 3 is added it will add it to the location shown in the picture next we specified grid x as 1 why because the next button comes after button 3 so that means it goes to cell location 1 in x so that's the only change grid y still 1 so we doesn't override it because it was previously 1 only 
and width and height also we doesn't override so the only change here for button 4 is grid x equal to 1 then we are adding this button 4 and if you see button 5 grid x changes it is 2 button 3 grid x equal to 3 so for all these button um, button 3 button 4 button 5 and button 6 the grid width is 1 now let us go to Eclipse. So once we add this, you will see two rows of controls. So here is the newly added code. So we already saw this in the slide. Now let us directly execute it. And if you see they are occupying one cell location. So grid X 0, 1, 2, 3. So here grid X is 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's how we specified here X 1, 2, 3 and with this uh, grid width is 1 but for these two button grid width is 2 so if I go back here you can see grid width is 2 and it is not changed for button 1 and button 2 that's why they occupy two width position now we will add button 7 so if you look at here for button 7 now you can say that it's a grid x equal to 0 because it is starting at x location 0 but at y side if you see it is occupying the cell location of 2 and width if you see it is uh, occupying 3 cell position height it is occupying 1 position only now if you look at here that's what we are setting Gcon is an instance of a grid back constraint from Java AWT. We are setting grid x equal to 0, grid y equal to 2, grid width equal to 3 because it is occupying 3 cell position. Then we are setting this constraint and adding this uh, button. And if I go to Eclipse, if you see here, uh, button 7 is occupying 3 cell position and its right hand side is a left empty so button 6 is there button 7 also there and so frame in frame window you can see a empty slot uh, between the edges of a button 7 to its right and bottom of a button 6 all right once we go to eclipse you will see it clearly So here we are adding our uh, button 7, let us execute it. And if you see button 7 is occupying 3 cell position because we specified grid width as 3. And grid y we specified 2, that's why 1, 0, 1, 2. So it started at y location 2. But x, loca x location if you see it is a 0 because we are starting at uh, first location. If you want to add some button then x location here it will be 0 1 2 3 all right now we are going to add button 8 much explanation is not required at this stage why because you will understand it easily you can look at here grid x 0 grid y 3 grid width 3 then we are adding the button 8 let's go to eclipse so here we are adding button 8 if you see button 7 and button 8 are added and you see a empty cell so okay 
let us add our uh, final button button 9 so by looking at the picture now you can see that grid x position for button 9 is 3 grid y position for button 9 is 2 grid width for button 9 is 1 why because it is occupying only one cell but grid y if you see i mean uh, the grid height if you see it is occupying two cells two and three so grid width is one grid height is two so that's what here we specify then we are adding this button here let's go to eclipse and finish our demo So here is our uh, final button 9 and you can see how the we arranged the layout quickly. So you can also first draw like this in a notepad or paper then you can arrange your controls and if you see here all our buttons let us maximize it. So all our buttons here right you can think of each button as a panel then when each one is panel then uh, the panel is maintained by the grid back layout and imagine each button as a panel so if each one is a panel then you can put different controls in each location so if you want to design a, a complex ui layout so it will be useful say for example here i can gather some user information here I can put a text area with a border layout, a panel with a border layout. In the center, I will add a text area. Then in the right and left side, I will add a scrolling controls. So in this video series so far, we haven't looked at the scrolling. And once you learn that, so you can actually create a rich UI using AWT and you can use the grid back layout in uh, uh, swing also so swing we will see in a next video series um, so yeah that's what i want to mention here so each one you are seeing here as a button but you can actually these are all the placeholder instead of adding the button here you can add a panel and using grid back layout you can create variety of uh, layouts So that's all here in this demo. As I already told, you see a grid back layout is considerably complex among the previous layout, whatever we saw. But you can also see how uh, flexible it was. So you can arrange the control the way you want and it will be especially useful when you want to create a um, uh, rich ui with a lot of controls in it with a different uh, layout so you can make use of panel and you can create a rich ui uh, using uh, panels grid back layout and its uh, constraints that's all here in this uh, video thank you for uh, watching bye